Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you could strum through a song called Ballad of Mona Lisa by Panic at the Disco. And it starts out with some really, really cool licks where you can kind of play open A, two on the G, first fret on the B, first fret on the high E string, open E, and then open A, two on the G, and then first on the high E, or B string, first on the B, first on the high E, open B, E, and then open B. First fret on the B, second on the G, open G, and then first on the low E string, third on the D, and then second on the G, open E, and then third on the B, and then first on the low E, third on the D, second on the G, open E, third on the B, and then open B, first on the B, second on the G, and then open D play that twice, and then third on the D, and then first fret on the B, and then open B, and then open E, and then second on the G, D string, first on the G, second on the G, open on the B, first on the B, third on the B, open E, and then second on the G, and then we kind of go back to that, that first lick again. So that might be kind of a cool way to kind of intro the tune or just kind of work in those licks. So we want to kind of play around with that for the intro. Now the chords that we kind of back that up would start on an A minor chord. And when you play A minor, first finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, and third finger on the G string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor. So A minor, A minor. But then we go to an F major. Then we play F major. We'll talk about an easy way to play this, but if you know the bar F major, you do your first finger across the entire first fret, second finger on the G string, second fret, third finger on the A string, third fret, and the pinky on the D string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an F major chord, and it sounds really happy. Now a good substitute for that is something called F major 7. The way you play F major 7, first finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds an F major, and it sounds really, really happy in F major 7. And then from the F, we'll be going to a D minor chord. When we play D minor, first finger goes to the high E on the first fret, second finger on the G string second fret, and then the third or the fourth finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D minor chord, and it sounds really sad. And then from the D minor, we're going to go into an E major chord. So we're going to take the first finger and go to the G on the first fret, second finger on the A string on the second fret, and third finger on the D string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the E major, we get, we'll be going back to our A minor chord, and then another A minor chord. So if you wanted to, you could just kind of strum through that intro with A minor, A minor, F, F, E minor, uh, E major, A minor, A minor. And then from there, then we'll be going into our verse part. And our verse starts on the A minor chord, and we stay on A minor actually until the very end. There's this cool little push where we do kind of an A minor, and then we do an E, and you might want to kind of kind of work kind of a down, down, down kind of a down. And actually through the verse, you might want to kind of just work kind of downs through that part too, and you could kind of take the flat of your hand and kind of lay it down on top of, of the strings to kind of get it a beauty quality. So you have A minor, A minor, A minor, A minor. And this is interesting because I've kind of followed the, the bass part through that. And actually the, the, there's another way you could kind of follow through that verse, actually working the intro progression. So you have an A minor, at the end. Um, or a lot of times with a song like this to make it more interesting, I like using something called a strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the A minor and just tried that too. You'd have down, down, up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, 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 down, up,
think about using it that way too. And then from there, then we go into, into kind of our, our next verse. Actually, you can kind of hear the chord changes happening really clearly on, on the, this particular verse. And it's a little variation of what we were just talking about. We start on the A minor, kind of like our intro. And then we go to F, and then we do another F, and then we go to D minor, and then we go to E major, and then we go to A minor, and then we do our A minor hit. Sounds like we go to a G major chord, and the way you play G major, first finger goes to the A string on the second fret, second finger on the low E string, third fret, and third finger on the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds like a G major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And that's kind of our push actually at the end, is kind of an A minor, G, 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 kind of instead of the E. So if we tried that with just the downs, we'd have the A minor, A minor. starts on the F major, but then we go to a C major chord, and we play C major. First finger goes to the B string on the first fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, and third finger on the A string on the third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from the C, we're going to be going to an E major chord, and then we kind of half an A minor, and then a G chord, and then we go back to F, C. Major, E major, and then we're back to F, F, A minor, G major, F, F, and then we got a C, and then an E major, and you could kind of work that with kind of that muting, you'd have the F. To our, our verse progression. Now, one other thing I would think about adding to the song though is bass notes, and a lot of times on that first down of the down, down, up, up, down, up, you can throw in a bass note for the chord. So on the A minor, you'd have the A string for your bass. On the F major bar, you'd have the low E string for your bass. So bass down, up, up, down. On the D minor, you'd have the D string for your bass. On the E major, you'd have the low E string for the bass. And on the G chord, we have the low E string for the bass. C chord, we have the A string for the bass. So you could kind of try that verse with a bass down, up, up, down, up, and you have A minor, the A bass down, up, up, down, A minor, the A bass down, up, up, down, up, up, the bass down, up, up, down, up, the bass down, up, up, down, the bass down, up, up, down, the bass down, up, up,
our bridge part, this kind of big blocking thing. It's kind of do downs on chords, A minor, F, C major, E major, A minor, Back on the E major with a E, A minor, G, F, C, E major, so kind of like our chorus, F, F, A minor, G, Chorus, we got That's the basics of how you can strum through Ballad of Mona Lisa by Panic at the Disco. So good luck.